So while I'm in the mood for this, I will do another quick video tutorial. Uh, this is a <clears throat> picture of Fredo. Um, it is taken uh, in a Canon 5D3 set to monochrome uh, JPEG. And uh, this is the JPEG, not the RAW file. So if you nail the lighting, look up here in the histogram, I haven't blown the highlights. I haven't uh, blocked up the shadows. And uh, this was taken with a 50mm uh, f2.8, uh, sorry, f1.8 lens, and I've taken it f2.8 at 1500th of a second, <coughs> ISO 800. So, uh, first thing that I would do is uh, apply a crop. So, I'm just going to rotate it slightly to try and get that vertical um, upright. So, um, just bring it down a tad, that little hole looks good. And I've got room below the elbow, room above the head. <coughs> so, um, what am I going to do? I would probably bring the highlights down um, a tad, 25, um, whites down 5, and shadows I will open up a wee bit. I don't, it doesn't need a lot here, so that's basically all I need to do there. Uh, photo, edit in. Photoshop CC and edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So this is from a JPEG and it has won a FIAP gold medal um, as well as a silver PAGB medal um, with a print from the mono JPEG. You don't always need to be working from the RAW file. So you know when people ask you what is your black and white conversion method uh, with this particular image, my black and white conversion method was the um, uh, the camera itself. <coughs> so sit back, look at the image, look for anything that grabs your attention because if it's not Fredo's face, it's a distraction. So there's a few distractions there, there's a major distraction there. So Command J, duplicate layer, and we'll use the spot healing brush uh, with a hard edge. 100% and uh, so I'm just going over those and uh, so let's zoom in on the model skin 100% so again just any tiny little blemish. Not that you would call anything on Fredo a blemish. So that is uh, more or less good to go. And because, as I say, we're on a duplicate layer, we can turn it off and on and see where we started and where we finished. That's nicely cleaned up, a flattened image. Um, this is a black and white. I'm going to play the, uh, the sepia tone and sepia tone 18% and flatten image. Um, <clears throat> vignette select inverse select modify feather hit enter command C command J image adjustments exposure and minus one click it on and off uh, we'll go for 70% yeah, flatten image, and uh, essentially that is, I mean, what else do you need to do to this? Um, uh, Command J, let's have a look at what Im Imaginomic does in terms of uh, skin softening or enhancing tones. Um, so if I zoom in. Turn that off and on. 
So I would go for something like 50% opacity on that. Yeah, and flatten image. So um, the uh, the detail in the fabric of the shirt here, and maybe some of the brick work in the wall. Um, I like to use the likes of um, Nick software just to bring out a wee bit of detail, just to make sure that the judge is aware you have captured the detail in the whites. So detail extractor here, and uh, go. I would go with the default settings. I would just maybe push the highlights up here to protect the highlights and click OK. So you don't. You, these filters are not to be run over the entire image. They're only to be run over the part of the image that you need to do something. So Alt and Mask. Underneath this mask, just show you is where the detail has been brought back. So uh, look at the side of the breast here on the material and on the wall. So if I paint a white hole through that mask, I'm going to brush at about 50% um, opacity here. So if I paint with a white brush through that um, black mask, I'm going to reveal that layer with much more detail underneath. So for a print, I would be printing this particular image on a fine art matte paper, maybe with a slight texture. And uh, all these uh, little uh, tricks in bringing back highlight detail are very important. For the final print. Yeah, so look at that off and on and uh, <coughs> flatten image. Command J, uh, filter, Nick software, color effects. So dark and light in center, finishing touch. Now the light is coming from here, there's a big window running this way, so the light is coming here, it's not heading face, fret out face on, so I don't put the centre in the centre of the eyes, I put the centre uh, just to the right of the eye where the, uh, the light has come from, I might just reposition that slightly lower, and uh, <coughs> Look at that before and after, drawing your attention to the to the face to where you want the attention to be. So I'm going to go 70% on that. Click it off and on. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Drawing your viewer's attention to where you want it to be brought. And last little touch, um, Command J. Now this is a, a a JPEG uh, in camera, so it will already have been sharpened on like a RAW file. But let's see what these my usual settings do. Inkjet Auto Luster 2400, 100%. Yeah, I mean that is that is required on that. I do have the default sharpening setting in my camera uh, for monochrome turned down. I also have the contrast in uh, my camera for monochrome turned down to two turns. From default, um, so again, I'll just go with seventy odd percent on that and flatten image. So there we go. Uh, file save, and that one I'd be saved as a TIFF file in Lightroom. And as I say, it has won uh, medals uh, in the um, UK Cotswold Salon this year as a as a monochrome print where it scored 14 out of 15 and uh, look at those eyes uh, that's where your attention is drawn to right up into that face so thank you for watching and start shooting your monochrome jpegs and ignoring your raw files unless you absolutely need them